So uh, turn with me to Acts chapter uh, 2. We'll, we'll stop there. And um, I, I just want you to know, I'm, I'm just um, a little uh, buzz right now. Um, again, wanting so badly to, um, to be um, feral with, with this information because, again, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is beyond exaggeration. It is absolutely the essential piece of our redemptive, uh, of our redemption. Yes, Christ died for our sins. We are certain of that. And yet, let me say this, and I say it uh, humbly, and I say it uh, reverently. Christ died for our sins. But if he was not raised from the dead, we would still be in our sins. His death, and I say it reverently, don't misunderstand me. His death was not enough to save us. It required the resurrection. And I want, to, I want to put some meat on that skeleton, on that bone. I want you to understand just how vital the resurrection of Jesus is. It is far more than just a holiday that we celebrate in the spring that brings the budding of trees and flowers and new clothing. Beloved as believers, this is, is a precious precious piece of, of, of scripture that, that you and I need to be so acquainted with that we cherish this, this idea of the resurrection. The death of Christ had to occur at the absolute right time. The right place. The right person had to die. In light of that, imagine the chance of that happening by itself without the, the sovereign hand of God bringing providentially events together the right time, Paul says, in the fullness of time, Christ died at the right time. That having been said, he was raised at absolutely the pivotal moment in history that would save us. Not a moment late, not a moment too early, but right at the absolute best moment in history. So that the death, the, the, the birth, the life, the death, the suffering of Jesus Christ and the resurrection was not just a casual event where one writer says um, things got out of hand. Jesus lost control of, of things. He didn't intend to die. As if, as if it, it, it happened and, and got without God's permission. Um, but I, I, I just want to impress upon you for the next uh, few moments that we're together just how essential the resurrection is to you and I. Um, so here in Acts chapter 2, I, I want to uh, read this, this passage. Acts chapter 2, verse 23. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and you put him to death. Whom God raised up, having loosed from the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in hell or in Hades 
nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Father, how grateful we are for the reading and the hearing of your word. Each time that we have this privilege to enter into it, we realize that the entrance into your word, it gives light. And we thank you for the light. Now, Spirit of God, illumine our minds with it and grant to me clarity in my speech, in my thinking, that uh, my words and, and my, my uh, temperament may not get in the way of what you're, you want to convey. And we'll be careful to give you the glory we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The resurrection was essential for these six reasons. And obviously all six of them we're not going to be able to accomplish today, but I want to leave them with you so that you can be pondering them and uh, praying about them. But the first reason, the, the resurrection was essential because the resurrection affirms the Father's promise. It affirmed the Father's promise. God promised that he would raise Jesus from the dead. Two, the resurrection authenticates the Lord's person. It authenticates who he claimed to be. Third, the resurrection asserts the Lord's purity. It asserts his purity. Fourth, the resurrection authorizes the apostles' preaching. We shared that this morning with the uh, 8 o'clock um, worshipers, that the resurrection authorized the preaching. And so we preach, we teach, you come to church for one reason. The reason why you're sitting there listening to me is for one reason and one reason only. Because Jesus is not in the grave. He's alive. He authorized these moments. And then fifth, the resurrection of Jesus Christ acquits the prisoner. You and I, we have been acquitted well, his resurrection is the legal acquittal of sinners. And then sixth, the resurrection augments the believer's prospects, our future. Because Christ was raised from the dead, Jesus said, because I live, you too shall live. So the resurrection is essential. Essential because one, yes, it affirms the Father's promise. David um, is quoted here in Acts chapter 2 where the scripture says, For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. The Father promised the Son in a, uh, prophetically and in a secret counsel that, and we're, we're, we're given, as it were, a... A, um, a privilege of hearing this counsel take place between the father and the son. The father says to the son, you will not leave my soul in, in Hades, nor will you allow your holy one to see corruption. This is quoted um, here in Acts um, of King David, who in Psalm 16 is praying this prayer, but it gives us a, a, a glimpse into this counsel of, of the Father's intention relative to the Son, that yea, though he be crucified, he promised, I will not let your body see corruption. I will not let you stay in Hades. Hades was this compartmentalized place of the dead. Dead people prior to the resurrection of Jesus Christ went to a place called Hades. Um.